All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and get started by creating our home page. So we're going to need a, an index, HTML, and an app, CSS. So in the index HTML, we basically want a starter HTML5 template. In VS Code, you can do uh, exclamation and then tab, and this will give you the scaffolding for an HTML file. So I'm going to change the title here to quick quiz. And I think that's good. So we're gonna add a, a few different things in here. One that I forgot is actually uh, a link to our CSS. So we'll need to add that. And uh, this is called app CSS. So we'll change that from index to app CSS. So now we've got uh, HTML file. We can add, let's just add an H1 here to test that this is working. And what we're gonna do, or what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna use uh, something called the live server extension uh, to open our application on local host and uh, it basically creates a live reloading server which you'll see what that means in a second so if you want this extension uh, under extensions it is called live server here so go ahead and install that and then when you've got it uh, sometimes you get an option that pops up down here uh, but I can always right click and then do open with live server so what this is gonna do, and it actually opened on the wrong page for me, a wrong instance of Chrome. So let me bring this over here. And what this does, again, it started a uh, local host server actually on, a, um, on an IP here, and then at port 5500. And so as I start uh, changing this to be quick quiz, quiz, if I change this and save, this is gonna automatically refresh in our browser. So this is gonna make it really easy for us to see the changes as we make them and uh, just kind of speed up our, our process. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm going to, I'm going to scaffold out this HTML and then we're going to style it and we're going to finish up the home page uh, in this video. So, uh, what I want, um, and as I'm doing this, I'm going to give another note. So, uh, Emmet are, uh, snippets or abbreviations that you can use in HTML and CSS built into VS code. If you've never used these before, definitely check out, uh, the Emmet docs and I can pull open Emmet docs. I can pull open this here for you. So docs.emmet.io. This is gonna incredibly speed up your HTML and CSS development. So definitely uh, check it out and then just kind of follow what I'm doing if you can. If you've never done it, you might go do some practice, uh, but you can pause the video and catch up if you need to. So uh, by typing dot .container and then tab, this is an uh, Emmet abbreviation to create a div with a class of container. If I did uh, a hashtag of container, uh, that would give me a div with an ID of container. So by default, uh, your Emmet abbreviations are gonna give containers, then you can, or excuse me, divs, and then you can give it classes or IDs, things like that. So uh, speaking of IDs, inside of this, I'm gonna have an ID called home, because this is gonna be our home page. And then I'm gonna give it a couple of classes, uh, Flexbox helper classes that we're gonna create in a second, and we'll talk about what Flexbox is. So this is gonna have uh, flex center and flex column and then I'll tab it over so now I've got a div inside of my container div with an ID of home and a class of flex center and flex column inside of here when I have an h1 that's that does say quick quiz and then we'll also have a couple of uh, anchor tags to link to other pages in our application one the actual game so the play button and then a high scores button to go and view the high scores so uh, what this is gonna be is an anchor tag with an href to game HTML. And then uh, we can also add some styling to this and we're gonna make it look like a button even though it is uh, an anchor tag. So, so I just wanna make a copy of this line and then I'll change it from game to high scores and then change uh, the text here from uh, game or play to high scores as well. So these are gonna be two uh, buttons that we'll see on our page. Uh, obviously this looks really terrible right now. And so we're gonna open up our CSS file so we can start styling these things. But we've got all the HTML here that we need. We just need to go in and add uh, support for all these classes and things like that. So in our app CSS, uh, one thing I wanna talk about is using, let's see, using rim in CSS. Now rim gives you the ability to to define your font sizes or margins and paddings relative to the, the root font size, basically. So if you change that root font size, anything using a rim will change accordingly as well. And I'll show you uh, kind of exactly why we wanna do this in a second. 
So you can read through uh, some different uh, different articles on this. There's lots of content on it, but this is a pretty common thing that a lot of people use instead of pixels, for example, in this situation. So the way we're gonna set this up is we're gonna use our root selector, and that basically just becomes our HTML tag. Uh, one, we're gonna set the background color to ECF5FF. And uh, we should see a change here. It was very subtle. It's a very light color. It's almost a white, but it's got a little bit of, of blue in it. So that's gonna be our background color. And then now we're gonna change our font size to 62.5%. Now this looks really weird. The reason this is 62.5%, the default font size in most browsers is 16 pixels. So 62.5% of 16, if you do the numbers, is 10 pixels. So now the root size, uh, the root font size is gonna be 10 pixels. So anything uh, that we reference with rims will be based on that uh, 10 pixels. So we'll come back to that in a second. So the first thing I'm gonna add is box sizing border box. Now what this means is if I add a border to a box, uh, it's gonna include the width of that border in the calculation, calculated size of, the, of that box. So if I have a box that's 40 pixels by 40 pixels and I add a five pixel border, without box sizing set to border box, that'll really make your uh, square uh, 50 by 50 instead of uh, 40 by 40. So with border box, that means that the 40 by 40 is going to include your box sizing. So that's what we want. So we'll have that, then we'll have, uh, just set some font family stuff and we're gonna use Arial Helvetica Sans Serif, not gonna get too fancy here. Uh, then I want to reset basically all of the margin and padding so we're gonna we're gonna make sure that we control all of the margin and padding in our app and then uh, the text color that we're gonna use is uh, 333 so the reason uh, using text color a little bit off from black black is it can be pretty harsh you probably won't see much of a difference here when I save uh, well you'll see the the uh, the spacing change and the color here is a little bit different it's not as harsh as a pure black so it's just something a little bit off so I'm gonna co copy in a few things um, I'm gonna set a default margin bottom for our H1 through H4 tags, and then I'm going to overwrite these a little bit. I'm gonna copy in some of these styles so that you guys save a little bit of time coding them, you guys can see. So what we're doing is we're saying uh, H1, the font size is gonna be 5.4 rim, and rim, again, is gonna be relative to that root font size. So this is basically gonna be 5.4 times 10 pixels, which is 54 pixels. And then the color is gonna be a blue color and then we've got a margin bottom here and then similar stuff. Um, we'll come back to this band, that's gonna be used later on but I, I've kinda got it in here anyway. And then uh, H2 is gonna be four, 42 pixels and then a margin of 40 pixels. Font weight is gonna be bold, or excuse me, not bold, H1 was bold. And then our H3 is gonna be 28 pixels, font weight of 500. So when I save this, you'll see now this is gonna refresh this is gonna be what our H1s are gonna look like with this blue color, it's gonna be pretty big. And then we still gotta style our links down here. All right, so now I'm gonna get into creating uh, some of our, I call them utility classes. So usually in my CSS, I will uh, leave a comment here and just type out uh, utilities. And uh, the first thing we're gonna start with is container. Now this is gonna be, uh, the goal here is to provide some padding and uh, to pad provide some padding, padding on the outside, but what we wanna do is center uh, all of our stuff in basically in the screen. So we want this uh, this to take up the entire view width. So this will make it 100% of the view width and then the height will be 100 of the view height as well. So this is gonna make basically take it, make it take up the entire page. And then we'll have display of flex and uh, we'll talk a little bit about Flexbox is, what Flexbox is here in just a second. Uh, with Flexbox, we've got justify content center and align items center i think if we save this we'll go ahead and see some see a difference here so with flexbox which is relatively new in css it uh centering things is incredibly easier than it used to be in the past so uh what happened here is display flex uh turns this container into a flexbox container and then since it's taking up this entire height and width of the page justify content will center things horizontally by default and then allied items will center things vertically by default. So if I started this, uh, the align items to flex start, for example, that's gonna pull things up to the top. If I undid that and did uh, justify content flex end, for example, it's gonna push everything to the right. 
So uh, Flexbox is definitely something you'll uh, you'll want to spend some time with if you haven't before. But just know that these three lines allow me to center things horizontally, horizontally and vertically. All right, and then my max width, I want to be 80, 80 rem. So basically what I'm doing here is, let me do an inspect here and I'll show you. It looks like I've got a typo here, so it should be 80 RAM with no space. Now if I select, so if you look at, if I hover over my container, see that it, it stopped at this 800 pixels, which is right about in here. And then it has uh, this extra content to the right. So what I want to do is set a margin zero auto to go ahead and center that content as well. So this will, this will just kind of make sure that as my screen gets bigger, there will be some padding, but as it gets smaller, it will take up the entire screen with that 100 viewport width and viewport height, but still keep it centered. So that's all we're doing there is really just trying to keep all of our stuff centered inside of our application. All right, and then on top of this, I'm gonna add um, any child of my container. I wanna make sure that it's width is 100% uh, so that things can think we can continue to style things or excuse me center things horizontally so I'm gonna uh, paste in just a few more styles here you guys can grab them from the source code just to kind of speed this up a bit uh, so what I've got here is flex column will give you a flex box and then it will set the direction to uh, column so typically uh, or by default uh, flex box direction is horizontal now we're flipping that direction to be uh, to be vertical so it's going to stack things on top of each other notice how play and high scores got stacked on top of each other flex center is going to align uh, both justify content and align items to center justify center will just do uh, justify content center uh, text center will align uh, things in the center align text center and then hidden will hide things if we need to which we'll get to later on in the course so uh, just to kind of reinforce some of the things that you're saying one we've got that container which is a flex box it's going to center the the main content of the page on the page the home also has a flex center and flex column which means this is going to be a flex box with a vertical direction so it's going to stack things on top of each other like this and then it's uh, got flex center so it's centering all of that content as well and then we've got our our app name and then our two buttons so the last thing we need to do is actually style our buttons and so i'm going to come in and create a section with a comment called buttons so I'm just gonna paste in some of this button code and then I'll talk you through it. So we've got our, our class of button and this is being applied to an anchor tag, but obviously we wanna make it look like a button. So we've got a font size here with basically 18 pixels. We've got some padding, we've got a fixed width, we've got centered text. Uh, we've got a border here of one pixel, basically 0 0.1 rim. We've got a margin bottom. You need to set text decoration to none because by default anchor tags are underlined. So we don't want that. And we've got the color of the text and the background color. So save that and we'll see the buttons pop up and look pretty good over here on the right. And then also we've got a hover state. So the hover state, we want to set the cursor to pointer. We'll add a, a drop shadow here. And we're still using that blue color to do that drop shadow with a little bit of transparency. And then we'll do a transform. So we're basically gonna move this thing up just a bit. Uh, I think it's, I guess that's one pixel. And then we'll do a transition. So we're gonna not just jump to that position, we're gonna let it transition over the course of a short period of time. So as I hover on these buttons, you can see that effect. Now these are pretty common styles for hover effects. So you're almost always gonna do your cursor as a pointer. A lot of people add drop shadows and then do a, a little tiny transform just to kind of give that nice little subtle effect. And then I wanna show you uh, at some point later on, we will have a disabled button uh, and that will that will come when we're looking to accept high scores. So we've created this for now. Basically what it's gonna do is it's going to uh, change the cursor. So instead of pointer, it's gonna show something that basically says you can't click. And then it's not gonna do that box shadow and transform. So we'll talk about that more when we get to that video. But for now, uh, you can see we've got a pretty good looking homepage. These anchor, uh, anchor links will work, but uh, game HTML doesn't exist yet yet and high scores html doesn't exist yet either so that's going to do it for this first video in the next one we're actually going to go ahead and create our game page and go and scaffold out uh, the layout of our game so i will see you in the next one